Even if the oldest traces of a heating system dates back to Roman times, the hypocaust concept lost its popularity as time went by, especially because of the big number of slaves that it requires to work properly. Let's jump to the end of the 19th century, when Alice Parker is born in Morristown, New Jersey. Alice, who was a bit forgotten by history, grows up in Morristown and studies at the Howard University, one of the few schools that accepts women and black people at the beginning of the 20th century. And the young girls got these two specificities. Parker graduates in 1910, but doesn't go to the university, unlike most of her classmates. What does she do for a living? Good question. Leave a comment if you've got the answer. What we know is that Alice, realizing that chimneys were not efficient and quite dangerous, starts to think about a better way to heat houses and buildings. At that time, natural gas is used to light the streets, but also as a power source for the industry. As nobody thought about gas for domestic use before, Parker is about to do it. She gets a patent in 1919 for a system which combines the gas furnace and pipes that deliver and regulate heat in the entire house. Alice Parker is the inventor of central heating. If her invention doesn't make her famous, as African-American women had difficulties to impose their views at that time, Ellen Eglin would agree on that, Alice Parker's patent introduces, at least, the notions of thermostat and forced air, which are still in use today. As Alice Parker's life remains a mystery, let's ask one question. Is getting an efficient heating system and eliminating the pollution due to the smoke and the ashes our sufficient reason to divest Charlene Gulls of his favorite activity? You've got two hours.